Welcome to Centre Court, all thanks to OMF Australian Design and Owned. I'm Bianca Chatfield and Maddie Brown is alongside me. Grand final, it has been played, and I think you'd probably agree, one of the most epic games we've ever seen. Oh, it was amazing. I mean, you want to script a grand final like that, but it just played out perfectly. And I can't believe it. It's like the season starts and in a blink of an eye, then it's over and done with, and we're on to next things. We are on to next things, and that's a good segue, isn't it? It to is. To get to the weekend that was, all thanks to OMF. Upgrade your sleep game with a quality mattress from Australian Design and Owned OMF. Look at this. Okay, so... So if you didn't get to see the game, one, you've got to go back and watch it. Yeah. It's a must-watch game. But the 60 to 59 scoreline is after five minutes of extra time as well. Mads, the Thunderbirds really dominated that first half. I don't think I've seen them play with such conviction and intensity like they did in that first half. No, and I think, you know, you could build a case for both teams how they were going to start. You know, the first five minutes of a grand final, it's always a little bit scrappy. But they came out and with purpose knew exactly what they needed to do and executed really well, which actually caught the Swifts on the back foot. At half time, they're leading by eight and you're thinking, oh my goodness, they haven't <laughs> even really hit that many two-point shots. They could completely roll away with this, the Thunderbirds. But the Swifts... Swifts. In true Swiss form, came all the way back, and you're like, okay, here they go. They're ready to. Get, they're ready to hit their straps. And there was this momentum ship at one time where you're just like, I think they're going to steal it. I think they're going to steal it. But credit to the the Adelaide Thunderbirds times. And you know what I loved is that the coaches stuck to the game plans that got them to the grand final. We'd seen both teams rotate a lot, bring on Sophie Fawns, obviously the Swifts in the five point um, five minute two-point shot, um, Tanya Obbs making sure she changed um, the mid-court, the defence end. So they stuck to their guns, but in the end, like, it was only a two-point shot from Housby that even drew it close to one in the end. But extra time, I was sitting at the end and I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, this is so exciting. Um, so I, I can't wait to hear what they all felt about Oh, it. just the emotions, everyone riding all the highs and all the lows. And we thought, you know what? What better way to do our grand final edition of Centre Court than to have one of the Premiership players themselves. And we can't wait to talk to Matilda Garrett from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. She's joining us now. Tilly, how have the last couple of days been? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Please excuse my voice. I've lost it. Um, <laughs> so fair to say it's been a pretty uh, incredible Last few days, to say the least. <laughs> what was talk about is go back to the game when obviously this final siren went. We saw you run out onto the court. Like, did it actually sink in then, or has it taken a few days to sink in that you are now a premiership player? Um, that's actually a really good question. I think when we did it, because um, there was a few moments in the last quarter that I was like, oh no, oh no, we're going to lose this. Um, <laughs> When the final siren went and we were, we almost won by three, but Helen shot a two. Um, I was like, oh my god, we've we've just done this. Um, so that was pretty incredible. But for me, it was probably yesterday at our fan day when we went to Netball SA and we had hundreds of fans there cheering and celebrating. And that was probably when I realised how much it meant to so many people. And um, that's probably when it sunk in, like, oh, my God, he, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> when you, like, during the game, obviously we know prelim final um, and the major semi-final, they were all so close games, right? And you got to step out and have a week off. What was that week off like for your team? And did you practise many times going into extra time and what your game plan was going to look like? Um, yeah, so the week off, a lot of people actually asked, oh, is that is that something you want? Like, do you want to have a week off? But I think for our team, we just made it um, a really, really good week off. The first week was a little bit, um, training probably wasn't as full on and we were able to do more bonding activities and we try to keep the schedule as normal as possible. So on the Saturday, instead of playing an SSN game, we played against um, the Southern Dragons, which are our men's SA side. Um, but, yeah, no, we definitely did do a lot of practising of scenarios and what we would do if we were up by this amount or down by this amount. Um, yeah, we definitely did that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tilly, let's talk about the thing that we really want to know. How have you celebrated? Because <laughs> it sounds like you've done pretty well. Um, <laughs> woo! Um, how have the celebrations gone? Because, you know, w credit to you, you've, you've rocked up on I here know. after a Mad Monday, so super impressive. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, celebrations have been large. Uh, 
as you can hear. Um, and fair to say, a few players sound the exact same as I do, so I think we're doing something right. Uh, but no, after the game on Saturday, that was pretty cool because we had about 350 people go back to um, our hotel room to celebrate with us. And then after that, we went out for a bit of a dance. Um, <laughs> And then had to be up at the crack of dawn to get on a flight. So that that was a little bit interesting. But as soon as we got off the flight, we then had our um, club's best and fairest. So we pretty much got off the flight, got ready again, went out again. Um, and then, <laughs> which is probably a good thing that we just had to keep going because we all were off only a few hours of sleep. Um, and then, yeah, yesterday we had our, our fan day in the morning, which was amazing, and that probably finished at about 2 o'clock and then went straight from there to Mad Monday. So it's been a big... <laughs> and, and was there a theme for Mad Monday? I saw a few dress-ups on socials. What was the country. actual theme? <laughs> we, it was just cowboys, cowgirls, country <laughs> thing. Uh, and B and Maddie, you probably both know this, but there's a little um, place in Adelaide called Shotgun Willies. So it was only fitting that we went um, to a country themed uh, pub last night. So Perfect. that was very fun. Tilly, you're obviously from Victoria. Um, who did you have at the game? Like it must have been, although it wasn't obviously an Adelaide grand final or, you know, home grand final for you guys, it must have been nice to have a lot of your family and friends be celebrating that moment with you. Absolutely. I think I had about maybe 25, 30 family members um, and friends come, which was amazing. But I actually, a, a few of the SA girls ended up bringing way more people over. <laughs> like Kat Williams had about 50 people from her hometown <laughs> and Hannah had about 50 people from her hometown. So um, I actually, yeah, it was so good to see so many people there in pink. Um, and even on our, at our captain's run the day before, there were so many fans that had driven from Adelaide, which was pretty special to once again see how much it means to so many people. And I think as well because over the last 10 years, if you look at where we've um, ranked on the ladder, it's been like 7th and 8th and 7th and 7th. So, um, yeah, I think this was not only special for us but all of our fans and it was so nice to be able to do it in my home state. <laughs> And for you personally too, you spoke to me after the game and you spoke about you and Cathy Fellows, the assistant coach of Adelaide Thunderbirds. You two have been on quite the adventure the past 10 years. How special was it to have Cathy there courtside with you as your defensive coach as well and be able to do it together? Um, uh, Cathy means the absolute world to me. She is, she is my second mum and, um, like you said, B, Cathy and I have been together since my Victorian days when I was doing underage stuff and then when I first played at the Pies, she was um, my a &L coach and then she was my assistant coach at the <laughs> Pies and then I come over to Adelaide and she's now my assistant coach here. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was so special and before the start of the game, I grabbed her in the hall and I just said, um, Cathy, I hope we do this today for you because for Cathy, she's made a huge sacrifice moving over to Adelaide and leaving her husband and her kids um, and not really being able to see them that often. And um, I just, yeah, I gave her a hug and she started crying and I said, no, Aww. not yet. We'll do that after the game. And, yeah, so as soon as the siren went and I went over to her, we just cried together. So that was really, mm -hmm. really special. Tilly, where to now? Obviously, you've still got probably a week of celebrations to enjoy, but... You know, we are aware that 80 players are out of contract. Do you guys know anything or what's the next plan of attack um, for you? Yeah, Mads, that is the million-dollar question. <laughs> we have no idea, um, which, you know what, it, for the Thunderbirds, it's probably been a little bit of a blessing because we've just been solely concentrating on the grand final and not having to worry about what's happening next year. We literally have just had to worry about the moment that we're in. Um, but I'm hoping that Thunderbirds want to keep the whole side together because we, um, yeah, we, we're, we want a premiership. So I hope. <laughs> Why not? No better reason. I mean, you can't earn a contract any other way, really, can you? Just by winning a premiership. And also, I mean, the opportunity to go back-to-back, -back, now the grand final is in Adelaide oh, next season. 
Oh, it would be rude not to. So we've got to give that a crack. Um, but yeah, so I we we really don't know much, Mads. Um, hopefully, find out something soon. But also, everyone's in the same boat. Um, so when it comes out, it comes out, and it is what it is. But I'm hoping to still be in Adelaide. <laughs> Tilly, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. We know we're pests by texting you saying, can you jump on and talk to us? But all the fans will absolutely love hearing from you. And also, I mean, seeing that you have celebrated pretty hard. <laughs> thank you. Well, you don't win these often. <laughs> So great to have the access that we get and for players to join us on what was, you know, a, probably a very big last <laughs> night. <laughs> big Man Monday. <laughs> uh, that was the weekend that was all thanks to OMF Australia Designed and Owned. Now I'm going to hand it over to Maddie. It's Maddie's Minute, all thanks to Flight Centre, your real deal centre, playing centre for over 40 years. Maddie, what have you got for us this week? Well, you know what? I've been pretty critical at times of Netball Australia, but I want to give kudos to them where kudos, where, you know, they need praise. And on the weekend, the grand final was outstanding. I mean, last year when they announced that they're going to sell off the grand final, everyone had an opinion about it. We were like, Netball, I don't think we're there yet. But two interstate teams in Melbourne sold out venue, they had a grand final lunch, 750 tickets sold to that. There was activations out the front, it was a vibe. It was so entertaining. When you got in there, I loved the halftime entertainment, I thought it was really different. Um, they had these, you know, light up bands and everything. Everyone you spoke to, to uh, that obviously attended the event, um, thoroughly enjoyed it and were like, well done. So well done Netball Australia. I also love that there were people from Perth, there were people from Queensland, not not just Sydney, not just Adelaide and not just Melbournians who love their sport. All over the country, people came, they made a week of it. Um, I even got people going, where should we go for coffee? Where should we go? And it was just a really <laughs> cool time. I was like, wow, like this is awesome to be able to host it in Melbourne and I'm really proud that we got to do this. Um, and you know what? Adelaide have obviously been announced as next year's grand final um, host. So, you know, I think things are just going to evolve and get bigger and better. But it's awesome to see that crowds flock to the grand final, regardless of who was in it. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. Well done to Netball Australia. The clubhouse fan zone out the front, we were worried. Like, even the Melbourne weather, you can't yeah. guarantee ever. <laughs> and it was like 14 degrees and raining. We knew we were going to film some of the pregame out there. And it was like, we've just got to do it. But it, it was a beautiful night. Yep. Yes, it was cold, but it was beautiful in the end. And the luncheon, I went over there for just a couple of minutes, but I was blown away. You spent the whole time at the luncheon. Can you, for those that didn't go to the luncheon or didn't know about what the luncheon was about, can you explain what that was well, like? Well, I actually sold some packages where you could go to the lunch and then go get your ticket, obviously, to the game. But there was obviously diamonds. Um, the two coaches came along and spoke, which was awesome. This is all pre-game too. So the access and the accessibility, I guess, that the teams have yes. given the yep. Netball Australia and the luncheons and the fans. I mean, it's just oh, it's so but they, they aimed for maybe 200 and 750 tickets were sold. So it was a amazing. The, the venue looks spectacular um, and you really got to have that little bit of an insight as to, oh, like, who did you peop people think? And people donned their colours and even in the stadium you could see the sections of pink and red. Um, so I think, you know, netball, of course, we've still got lots to learn and um, really far to go, but we're doing the right thing and I was like, you know what? As my, I probably was critical of it last year. Oh, I'm not sure we're there, but it was awesome. And as a spectator, I got to kind of enjoy it as a spectator. I was like, this is awesome. And maybe it is. Maybe it is. I know we're going on a bit about it, but maybe it, it, it was the fact that it was two away teams. Too, yeah. You had, I reckon it was, what, 60% Swiss fans in the crowd and then 40% pink for Thunderbirds. But that 40% pink, they were loud. They were, they were so very, very loud. loud. But I, I couldn't agree more. Loved it. That was Maddie's Minute, all thanks to Flight Centre, your real deal centre. All right, I want to talk to you about what's happening. World Cup's coming up very soon. We know that will start July 28th, but when do you get to head over? Well, I actually head over Monday 24th. Um, we've got a little bit of practice before, so I'll be on the ground um, doing some content, obviously, for Fox Sports, but also for Super Sport that are obviously um, broadcasting it over there. It's actually really cool because I get to work with a whole lot of different commentators and broadcasters from all the different nations. I've got to learn some of the tricky names, which is going to be interesting for <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, that is going to be one of the most <laughs> challenging parts. But part. I'll hopefully get on a lot of um, the Australian games, and so Sue Gordian will be over there as well. We've got some of our incredible Fox producers and um, you know, people in, in the truck coming over as well. So um, it's just, 
I've obviously never been to a World Cup as a player, but I'm actually really, really excited to be going over in a totally different role, but to just experience everything it has to offer. And when I was over there in January, the crowd, the, the supporters, South Africa were behind by 20, but it was like they were in it. <laughs> and it was like there was only one goal between it. So um, I'm excited to see what they really, what show they really put on. And I think it's going to be lots of dancing and lots of vibe energy. Yes. So it should be it should be a really good time. But the team head over, I think, uh, Thursday 20th. So yes, not long to go. Yes, they're now in Melbourne. So you'll start to see snippets of all their preparations and what's happening. But they're in Melbourne now getting ready. They um, released their dress um, today. And I think it looks unbelievable. Yep. It's got a beautiful First Nations design on it. And I think it's... Players have had a lot of involvement in the design as well, and I think that's really important because you want to go out there feeling really proud of the dress that yep. this particular World Cup team have chosen. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know you've got your your yellow version and your and your alternating green strip version, and yeah, I I think you know we've spoken about it. Wow, netball are making some big moves. Um, and yes, we've been critical of certain things, but yeah, there are some really good decisions, and it's great to see that those players, as you said, they're the ones wearing it. They're going to feel good in it um, and I'm sure they're going to go over and, and do all of us back home here really proud. Absolutely. I want to know who you think is going to win this year's World Cup. So make sure you get in touch on our socials. Let us know. Will Australia take home the World Cup? Could it be New Zealand? Will it be Jamaica? Maybe South Africa? <laughs> Maybe England? There's so many different options. Uh, but remember, I don't think... England have never actually won a World no, Cup. never won. New Zealand have won it a couple of times, but generally Australia have been super dominant. But is that going to be the same story in 2023? Who knows? I actually am struggling to think about how it's going to go, how those final few rounds will go as well when you're in the lead-up to the finals. Well, I've had a look at the draw and we'll probably discuss it a little bit more last uh, next week in our final show, but the way that the draw could come will either cross over with Jamaica or New Zealand um, and we'll play England potentially in our second crossover around. So New Zealand and Jamaica is going to be one of our crossovers, which probably is the biggest threatening game before you get to the, the gold medal match. I cannot wait for Tonga and Australia. <laughs> yes. Now that Monia Gerard will be playing for Tonga, Kat Tuivatu, she'll be yep. playing as well. It's going to be great just to see some of those old players getting out there on court. <laughs> we'll see how they back up with, you know, eight games in ten days. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll see how they go. <laughs> now, also, the final thing that we are all waiting on, much anticipation around this eighth licence. Yes. Did you hear anything on the weekend? Are you hearing any gossip? Oh, B, I tried my hardest in a room full of 750 people to hone down those people on the board and go, where are we You're like, at? are the people who are part of this new team, are they in yes, the building? Yes, correct. The eyes were, eyes were peeled and, and looking around. But I, I do believe whispers out there is that the players were having, um, you know, the Players Association were having a meeting with Kelly Ryan sometime this week. Um, there's still a little bit of time to go before that eighth franchise will be or that eighth licence will be given. I think they're waiting to actually name a general manager and a coach with it, which I think is really smart. They want yeah. to make, and we've spoken about the fairness of making it fair for all teams to have ac access. We've got 80 players off contract, but all teams need the right to be able to access whoever they need. And this new franchise, if they're going to be you know, competitive, they need to make sure that they can go and get some big names out yes. there. So um, that's probably what's taking time. The biggest thing is I don't think we will have anything until after World Cup. Ooh. So there is, still is that kind of, you know, players going away, that not security of um, obviously a contract next year. We do know the Diamonds obviously have extended their Diamonds um, contract, so they will be covered. But it's just more the longevity. Once you get back, mm. what are you doing? Um, and, yeah, are you relocating? Um, what's happening? So it's a real limbo land for a lot of these players. It's really, really hard. Um, but they also, I think, Netball Australia are taking that time because they want to get it right. Yes. They want to... Some of the offers that they did have, I don't think matched up to exactly the vision they see and, you know, p p potential, um, I guess, expansion in further years. Mm. But... Um, I'm just eagerly awaiting. I'm like, anyone who knows, hit us up. I yes, would love again, to know. on but our socials. Let us know. Yeah, if you know yeah, yeah. anything, <laughs> just tell us. We want the, all the goss. I mean, <laughs> I'm still I'm still thinking uh, Geelong, definitely the second team in Victoria, I still think is very much a front runner. And I think that Geelong or regional um, kind of flavour is exactly where it needs. Even if it's based there, but the games are played in Melbourne, I think that's the direction to go. Well, that was Senate Court. All thanks to OMF Australia Design Note for another week. Now, our next week, we've got one more show to go. Huge World Cup focus. We're going to bring you all the big things about all the teams that will be competing. And 
our prediction on what we think is going to happen and how it's all going to play out. So make sure you study up on that, Mads. Uh, thanks for joining us again and we'll see you next week.